Yesterday was the 23rd of October 2014 and we were able to visit with Carl Coleman out in his field and we discussed a few things and I thought this would be of interest in terms of Carl's original motivation and how it evolved into this experiment. Norman, we, when we cut our corn, the, 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 the land lays there for about three months before we do anything with it. And we'll normally have to spray uh, the, the weeds, pigweed and, and, and other problems, mainly pigweed because it's such a noxious weed, uh, at least twice. And you know, my thought was is after we got the corn cut and the ground just lays there, there's nothing for the, the microbes to feed on, the earthworms. So we wanted to try warm season multi-species crop and uh, we came up with this uh, sorghum sedan, sun hemp, and uh, uh, buckwheat. We did have to do an initial burn down because we had a lot of pigweed to come up after our corn harvest. So we did an initial burn down, we planted the cover crop, and I've been very pleased from, for two, two aspects. Number one, we haven't seen another flush of pigweed, and the few that we've seen in very, very bad fields they, they haven't grown uh, like they would normally, they would normally grow very rapidly, they'd put a seed head on very quickly. And the few pigweed we see have been very spindly, and the hen bit and chickweed that we normally have is, is a lot more lush where we did not have cover crop. And we still have hen bit and chickweed where the cover crop is, but it's very small and it's not near as competitively. So I'm, I'm very pleased with what we're seeing uh, so far in weed suppression. We, we've extended that into, uh, we're going to try to dramatically cut back on our fertilizer. Um, we're going to see what this, what this cover crop will harness and, um, and just how little fertilizer that we can put uh, to a growing wheat crop. We've got two sets of plots and uh, we used our GPS on our tractor to lay the long way out. Um, I, I got beside the highway and I, I knew that was straight and I knew it was straight with the woods and we laid our long way out and then I went through when I went X amount of feet and we laid our, our, our end rows and then our second plot but my big concern was how was I going to make it square because we, if, we, if we aren't square on the edge we're not going to be square on the rest of it. So I called one of my friends at Deer that we work with and uh, he told me about uh, Every, every line you lay is a longitude latitude, but it's also a heading. And uh, he said, take your heading and take 90 points off of it and enter that number in and back up where you want to start your, point, your plot and hit your A button and you'll have a, a perfectly 90 degree angle. So that's how we're able to get a straight edge and to lay it off properly as far as to make sure it's good and square. So. Uh, I was pleased that when we got to the end it looked square and when we started it was square and I, I think we've got a really good uh, plot laid out that um, I hope we're going to get some really good information from. So I want you to again consider supporting this project. I think it's very important especially in the coastal plain of South Carolina and um, go to our page on experiment.com it's how much fertilizer do we really need. Uh, you'd have to search the projects there, but we'd really appreciate your support. Thank you so much.